Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm here at Charles Barfnick's uh, saddle shop. Um, leather working, you can see a lot of things around. Um, he's been working on, he's completed uh, supplies here and there. He's gonna, he's gonna show us some, some things. I'm gonna sit down here across from him and his desk, turn the camera around and I'll just, uh, it'll be interview style and he's gonna show us some things. It'll be pretty cool. So uh, here we go. Hey Charles, thanks for thanks for uh, uh, having you know doing this for us. Uh, so this is Charles Barfneck, everybody. Um, please tell us a little bit of your story uh, to well, get where we are. Uh, <laughs> to get where we are. I'm a retired Dallas firefighter. Twenty seven years as a firefighter, and twenty years of it as a paramedic. Uh, I love before I retired. Uh, I decided I didn't want to work for anybody else again once I quit that. So I started the saddle shop out of my home, and uh, which is in Louisville, and uh, just kind of started out from scratch and learning how to do it. And first three years was pretty tough trying to figure out how what I was doing because I never had any training or yeah uh, anything like that. So. I'd grown up with the saddle, so I knew that much. <laughs> I didn't know where to buy the leather, the supplies, right. and uh, set up my tax status and do a business that way. I'd learn that. And uh, just word of mouth, 99% of the time, it's done well. Uh, I don't have to sell anybody because when they come here, they've already heard about my business and my quality and everything. Right. So I like that. Uh, before I went on the fire department, I was a salesman for rentals of women, and I never liked sales. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when I started here, uh, we had a terminally old daughter, and when she passed away in 2003, we already owned the land up here, but we hadn't moved up here. So, so you bought this farm when? In 99. In 99. So, you're uh, northeast of Munster, uh, uh, mostly north, but a little bit miles. east. Yeah. But, uh, I bought this when I retired from up there. I sold some land down in Highland Village. I, I mean, Louisville, when I had bought through the years, mm -hmm. little by little. And <clears throat> when we sold that, then we brought the money and bought up here. Right. Which was one of the best moves I ever made. <laughs> yeah. We love it here. Uh, ran the saddle shop, and I really, I told my wife, I said, you know, I know small towns, I think I know a little bit about Munster, and if anybody gets there in the saddle business before I do, I won't have a chance. I've got to be the first one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, this shop was just a big open garage, uh -huh. and we walled it in, and I remodeled it little by little, and got it ready for the saddle shop, and I've been here now, it'd be... 17 years in this shop and uh, it's been quite well uh, where I was born and raised in Louisville I was fourth generation down there and most of my grandpa and daddy's farms had been sold off but I gradually bought back a little bit of it at a time and we ran a boarding stables there for 22 years where we boarded horses and then when I moved up here I I had a manager hired down there that she'd been with me for 17 years so I'm, as an employee, so I knew she was dependable and everything. She ran that, and we'd go down there. I'd do all the maintenance work in the building. Yeah. I built all the barns, fences, everything. <clears throat> so we'd go down there and once or twice a week and keep up with everything and then come back here and stay here. So it's... Uh, Pretty good to us. The yeah. Supports it. And I've yeah. Got customers all over the world. Well, I, I know everybody here in Munster loves you. So that's uh, y'all are y'all are good people, and and uh, you've been well received as far as I can see. Yeah. But when you give as much as you do, uh, give to the community and service and everything, uh, get involved. It 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 happens more quickly. Yeah. Like you have done. That's the way we were raised. Right. 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 And, uh, we did the same thing down there even though I didn't have as much time. Right. Uh, my wife was a forest leader for 20 years, and 
We were in love and everything. Right. Yeah. So I'm just sitting here looking at your desk, and there's a lot of leather here on your desk. Uh, I'm gonna. So. A lot of leather yeah. So you uh, you do you do this for people? You build um, yeah. I guess that's a calendar uh, holder. Kind of desk uh, set. Yeah. And, uh, it's just some. Oh, okay. Some just kind of a rubber rubber mat. Like yeah. Most desk sets are made. But yeah. Leather on it. It's nice, and a Bible cover. This is my Bible. I made the cover for it. And then it's just two or three little things yeah. that need to be picked up. <laughs> yeah. That's my checkbook I've used for about 25 years. Wow. And, uh, is that a bookmark? No, it's going <laughs> to be a belt if I can find some more rawhide. This COVID has made it difficult to find some of this stuff. Really? But uh, I made a belt. Well, this is a one like he's wanting me to make. Oh, I see. And uh, it's quite an old one. He brought that for me to repair and put a new back on it. Oh. And then he wanted me to make another one for his son, just like it. So I'm still trying to find this stuff. I run out. And I have, luckily, I haven't had much trouble finding materials during this uh, pandemic, but there are some that the local and smaller offices have closed and mm -hmm. then you've got to order from national headquarters in New York yeah. or California or no telling where. But uh, I've done pretty well during this time. I've only had to wait a week or two at longer than usual for anything. Other than this, I think it's the only thing I haven't done. Yeah, they're all hide. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know why I thought of this and it's not even a great question to ask, but um, you ever made a, a picture frame out of leather? Oh yeah. Yeah? Uh, lamps. <laughs> yeah, look at that lamp. <laughs> this one's one I made and uh, got my brand on it. Uh huh. Hair on hide. I don't think I've got any picture frames here. No picture frames in here. Picture but... frames, cabinet doors, <laughs> everything, commode seats. Yeah, yeah. Everything you can take out. That's you funny. Would... Yeah. <laughs> I hear people all the time say, well, I'd buy stuff from you, but I don't have a horse. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff that doesn't have to do with horses. Yeah. Uh, a lot of gun leather, like a lot of rifle cases, pistol holsters. Yeah. Gun belts, all kinds of stuff there. You'll see some of it here in a minute. Uh, I've made quite a few. You take the wooden commode seats and put the uh -huh. leather with the tacks in it. Yeah. So I've got those all over the place. There's a lot of cabinet doors in the real high dollar homes up there in Plano. Really? Dallas. And they put leather on their Crystal. cabinet doors. Interesting. Yeah, it is. Anything you can draw, you can carve in leather. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you some examples here in a minute, but it's this cross is a very simple example. Yeah. You carve it where it looks like wood. The old rugged cross. Yeah, that does look like wood, <laughs> doesn't it? But, Pretty cool uh, looking. Made a lot of notebooks, photo albums. Purses. Purses. Yeah. I don't make many purses because they sell so cheap I can't afford to make them. Uh, they've got <laughs> something very special before they buy from me on purses. Gotcha. <clears throat> but uh, bags of all different types, briefcases. Yeah. Uh, let's go over here and I'll show you. Okay. Some of them. Yeah. Ready? Sure. Kind of a variety of things. Uh, here's some stools. I've made all kinds oh, nice. of stools with these kinds of tops on them. This is the same way I put the commode seat on. Just put that on top. And and you just freehand this, you just do it from memory, right? Yeah, I've got a one drawn over right now, ready to carve. Yeah. To demonstrate how yeah. to carve it and everything. This is a checkbook I made for a pilot a long time ago, uh, and he never picked it never up. Never picked it up. <laughs> I don't know whether it crashed or what. <laughs> Hope not. This is a, ca a pistol caddy. Got the pistol in nice. it. Nice. And then all kinds of different holsters. Yeah. This is a rifle sling I just made for a guy. Miguel, I assume. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He's not the one that bought it, but it's for him. It's, it's for him. Yeah. This is a portfolio I use on the desk oh, every nice. day. 
Is that ostrich? Uh, it's imitation ostrich. Imitation ostrich. This is a, a bag I made that holds four boxes of shotgun shells for bird hunters. Nice. Quail or dove. Quail and dove. And then the half sheath. This is a briefcase I made nearly 30 years ago. Oh, wow. I really use this thing. It's. It it's looks new. Good carved leather, just out of good leather. Leather just, just lasts a long out. time. This is my photo album that I used to. Show all the different things oh, that I nice. make. Uh, lots of saddles, briefcases, yeah, briefcases, chaps. Huh. There's another Bible cover. These are different photo albums and things, notebooks. Uh, here's a wedding album. This I made for the lady that plays piano at our church. Oh, okay. And uh, she, uh, it's modeled after, modeled after her, the piano she plays. And then I think that's Amazing Grace I put on there. <laughs> but uh, you can see all kinds of things you can draw on them. I know that name. Yeah. Now you'll see several in here probably. These are cell phone cases. Different types. Yeah. These are iPhone, I mean, uh, laptop. Oh, okay. Uh, Bags. Bags. Yeah. That one was real interesting. One of the local people here. This was their son's winning touchdown. I think it was the last game of the season. Oh. The senior year. Nice. So we, we made that picture on here. <laughs> and they came up with, with God, all things are within reach. And then congratulations and stuff. So you can do just about anything yeah. you can imagine. There's one of the cabinet doors that's hanging right there. Oh, okay. Here's some of them that I've made too. Those are huge. There's all kinds of stool tops. Most people recognize that. Uh-huh. Briefcases. This was a local resident. Uh, that was her graduation present. Oh, okay. So all kinds of things that... I love making these things. I first got the idea on this when I visited a friend, and they had one of their great great grandfathers sitting on the coffee table. Wow! And it's still good looking. Wow! So I said I got to make some of those. And they get, I sell a lot of rifle cases, and they're customized, you know, for the the people that order them. Uh huh. And uh, they're padded and velvet lined inside. But I sell a lot of these different ones. Those are shotgun cases. Shaps over there here. Lots of things. Uh, another shotgun bag deal. Uh, I thought this was a pretty unique idea. Uh huh. That deer was killed on the Barsh Ranch here. Oh, yeah? That's a lot of stamping or yeah. pounding yeah. on a ma with a mallet. Yeah, it was. Like and these are some saddles I made of one of these. That one's the saddle I'm using right now. Oh, yeah? And uh, when I, my old horse died and my new horse, the old one that I was using over there, wouldn't fit, so I had to make another one. Huh. And uh, this is one my wife uses. That uh, one back there was made in 08. And was traded in on you in here not long ago. Oh. Pretty cool. Amy says you're amazing. That's huh? Janet's daughter Amy says you're amazing. <laughs> hey, she's the one that said you make purses. I'm guessing she's seen a purse or two that you've made. There's stuff scattered all over the place. I got saddles in Africa and Europe. Uh, the Middle East, all over the United States. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know of any I have in Asia. But uh, do you do you sell um, wholesale to any companies and 
Okay, it's all uh, out of here. Strictly a custom maker. Uh huh. I try to make. I, I say I've got two things to sell: originality or uniqueness. Uh huh. Your own personal right thing and quality. I don't ever cut corners on anything. Yeah. And my stuff will last long after I'm gone. That's why I love it. Yeah. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's. Uh, I had a call not long ago from a guy. Well, it was a detective in uh, Kentucky, and he said they found one of my saddles in the dumpster, oh. and he sent me a picture of it, and it was, like I say, unique, because it, it was kind of, a, it was plain sight about like that, but he had put it, and his initials were E and D, and the N in the middle was taller than the E and the D, mm -hmm. and I recognized it right off, and I looked up my records. Called the detective back, told him who it belonged to. Uh -huh. Somebody had stolen it. Yeah. Dumpster. So he he found the owner, and I guess he's got his saddle back. Yeah. And your tag, you have a tag on them. I just like this right here. I put my name. Oh, okay. On them all. I'll zoom in on that. And I, I try to put them someplace. Yeah. Where Charles Park. It can't be removed. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's good advertising. Yeah. And, uh, most of them I'll put it under, <clears throat> up under here. Oh, yeah. Cover. It might be a driver's license number or the saddle number or whatever. Gotcha. <clears throat> I've made uh, some different types of leather over here. Everybody's heard of rawhide. Yeah, that's what you were talking about a while ago. And you cut little strips off of that yeah, and, and I'm needing use it to tie thinner, things but together. I may have to thin this down and use it. This is harness leather. It's that made, is super thick. You know, lines and harnesses of all kinds. How is and, that so thick? Huh? How is that so thick? Uh, it comes in all different thicknesses like all these leather do. In fact, I can show you here in a minute how you thin it down. This is what's called vegetable tan. This particular piece is uh, holster leather. It, it's tanned where it molds real easily. Uh -huh. And that way you can get it yeah the gun or whatever this is latigo and it's used for it's, uh, latigo for the draw straps and yeah stuff like that on saddles and reins that's and that's and in stuff. that garth brooks song rodeo yeah this stir, uh holster leather shows you how you can mold this kind of stuff and it holds its shape if you use like saddle skirting, which is what I make the saddles out of look down here, oh. that will hold its shape in gotcha. harsh bends and stuff like this. That's why gotcha. you use holster leather, so they tan them differently. Gotcha. This is hot stuff with waxes and stuff, and it sheds water and lasts indefinitely without hardly any treatment at all. And look how thick that is. Yeah. Wow. And that's the a, a frame, I guess, a saddle frame. I, yeah, that's called a tree. That's a tree. It's wood. The front and back are made out of hardwood, laminated, and then the bars going along this way are made out of softer pine, and they wrap it in rawhide for strength. It's got the flexibility it needs for the way a horse moves, but it it holds its strength. It can mm -hmm. snap. And that's what you start with mm -hmm. to make your saddle. You can see several of them over here. Oh, yeah. You've got several different kinds that even though they're made the same way, this is covered in Kevlar, which is the same thing both for this one. Right. It's 10 times tougher than steel. Why would somebody need? These, this is for professional calf ropers. That ropes okay. Many calves every day. Of the right. Day. They need something that's going to last a long jerk time. Jerk. And then this one is the same thing, but they decided they wanted to try something new, so they... They covered it the same stuff you put in the bed of a truck. Mm -hmm. It's already done like this and covered with Kevlar, but instead of a shellac finish to keep the moisture out, they, they covered put the bed liner. Bed liner on it. <laughs> Interesting. Looks so, looks like gray paint yeah. from here, but uh, so, well, I'll try one of those. And come on, Jeff. A bunch of old saddles that need repair. Uh, Amy wants to know if you make breast collars for horses. Oh, yeah. Why, of course. 
<laughs> I've got some stuff laid out here to just give a real brief yeah? uh, example of how I do it. This is a belt that uh, I laid out so you can kind of see what the finish, it's got some age on it, but you can see what it looks like finished. I think it's the same pattern as this one. But uh, I've got my mallet here and got all kinds of tools that makes different impressions. Mm -hmm. uh, just one example. This is a beveler, because it's bevel like that. Uh huh. And this is what you do to nearly all of it. Let's see if I can get here. Or I'll come around this side, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got oh, this glued yeah. down to some X-ray film, and the reason I do that is because as I tool is this link, the belt is going to stretch. Okay. If I glue it to this, it doesn't do that. Gotcha. And it's only with temporary glue. When I take it off of this, then I will uh, attach a layer of leather on the back and then sew it together. Okay. But you put that bevel in the groove that I've carved. Let's see here. And that's what gives it that raised look. Trying to stay the way you can. No, yeah, yeah, you uh, you do you do your job, and we'll figure it out as we go here. Now, once you get that done like that, you can take what's called a backgrounder. Let's see, this one is going to need. Where is it? Oh, there it is, right there. Can we see the end of that? Yeah, it's a little. It's called a cedar. It's got little seeds. Yeah. And you just put it right up in there. Okay. So it's making that little. It's it's knocking that down where it looks like it's three dimensional. The same cedar almost is used on this one. You can see right I here. I see. Where, where All the the darkest. Right. You know the where it looks kind of blackish almost. It, it makes everything else look raised even though it's not. Right. You're smashing down the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> And then here's a little piece that I carved. And, and I, when you say carved, you took a knife and you cut some of the leather off. Oh, well, let's do that first real quick. I've got a picture. Well, that's the same one that's on the stool over. I'm going to take plain water. I'm going to wet it down. And the way I got this design on here, this is called a stylus. Just a sharp, it's kind of like a ballpoint with no ink. Hmm. And you you take like this, and you draw like that. Oh yeah. And it leaves us see. Mash down, go around the pattern. It leaves that. Uh huh. So then, once you've done that, you can take your swivel knife huh. and you cradle it like this. Oh, let me get back out. Show me that swivel again. Nice. That's the difference between a good quality one and a cheap one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's real good ball bearings. You've got your point, your your oh, knife on boy. this. So you just take it. Yeah. Put it on your line. Whoops. Put it on your line. And you follow your lines. And it's cutting a groove in it. Mm-hmm. And then that's how you come up with, with your design. And then once you've got that, that's when you leave, use the beveler and you bevel it. Oh, okay. And then different kind of tools here, but uh, I'm going to try, let's see if I can. Let's say right here I need some definition to the shoulder. Like that. Yeah, that's a lot in a hurry. <laughs> so you started doing leather work with really no training? Yes. And just figured it out as you went. Read books. And Slow but sure. You know, back then uh, when I started, saddle makers wouldn't tell you anything. It was 
very closely guarded secret. <laughs> right. They didn't want competition. <laughs> Nowadays, you've got videos showing you how to do it. You've got books. You can get on the internet, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, everybody's that, more giving. That's what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I started, nobody would allow this. Right. <laughs> nobody else to see it. But, but now we know that um, that's a lot of work, and people don't last long when they start on something. People yeah. often uh, give up before. You know, it's uh, before they get good at something. If you can draw, you could carve leather. Yeah, yeah. let's do the tail. Where are you getting it? Nice. Now, um, what what would be the next thing you do? Whoops, I bumped the camera. What would be the next thing you do on the tail there? On the tail? Yeah. You can do it a number of ways, but you can... Put a few more lines in. Yeah, you just carve whatever kind of lines you want. Like, most tails will... They'll, the hairs will swivel around like this, and then there'll be another one coming through here. You just keep doing that till it finally looks right. Yeah. Same with the mane here. Yeah, it's like drawing or painting. The okay. better you know your subject, the right. closer you can get to <laughs> right, it. Right, right. Making it realistic looking. But that's that's how you do the carbon. Yeah, do that, and then you get your other tools to add more definition. Yeah. And uh, like on this one, I showed you the beveling. Uh huh. Uh, now I'll show you a couple of other things we do. All kinds of different patterns and, uh, of tools. What's this, that? This particular one's called a crowner. Okay. And you got this flower here. size on that one. Then I'll take a, a pedal lift. Whoop. Every one of these I keep in a particular hole. That uh -huh. way I don't waste time looking for something. Right. I'm always just reaching up there to get it. This particular one, I think I'll go with this one. You put... Uh, no, no, let's see. Use this one here on this one. This is called a pedaler? Pedal lift. Pedal lift. See how it, it puts that in there now. If mm -hmm. I tilt it back. Oh, wow. See how you that does? Punch right through the yeah. leather, won't you? Yeah, it will. You, that's one of the first things you got to learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut it in two. And then let's see. On this one. I'll use this particular size. See, it's just a much smaller one. Uh-huh, very small compared to... Yeah, let's see. See how that gives definition to uh -huh. that? Uh-huh. Anyway, oh, yeah. so you got different sizes of uh, the uh, crowners. There's a smaller one. So I'll put it like oh, that. Oh, yeah. You said you needed a, a different size over there. Yeah. Then I'll go back to the one I had before. All right. And then I'll go to the pedal left again. Now, once you get that done, you come back in. Well, wait a minute, let's carve it couple of lines here right quick. Whoops, that needs to be wet down a little bit more to make it real good. Mm -hmm. All right, now once you've got the pedal 
this right here, this piece. You put some more definition to it. Everything I'm doing, it's got different sizes yeah. that you can use. And then, like I said, yeah, it's got a little bit wetter here. Finish this up. Uh oh. Ah. Yeah. Hey, you want to you want to get that? Get All right. So we're gonna go Let's and go. we're gonna go look at some of this other stuff that he did. So you missed the call? No, it was one. This is a public service. Oh, okay. One of those. It said Louisville, so. Right. You thought maybe it was somebody that needed you. Yeah, a friend of mine died at first, so I thought maybe somebody Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. that. Right now, see how much better uh, line I get now that's wet? Oh, yeah. It really goes in there. Now, watch. We've already put these on. We do what's called decorative cuts. Oh, I see. You're cutting into what you stamped. Yeah. Making it look like a crease mm -hmm. in the flower. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And just a little bit, you made that look like a flower. Yeah. And then like this one here, you'd come in and do little cuts like that. Mm-hmm. Just like the name decorative, it just right. kind of decorates it up. Uh -huh. makes it looks, looks, looks real good. Makes it dresses it up. So, uh, well, I don't want to take all your afternoon, but um, maybe we come back another time. And and uh, yeah. what what do you uh, did you have some things in mind? Maybe you can, maybe um, I don't know, I don't know. Is there anything else that we could? No. Oh. I tried to lay things out where we could do yeah. a demonstration of different things pretty quick. Right. So, or you want to keep going? How many more? Did you have some other things? Right. Uh, well, do you do... You, you do covered carving. We've covered uh, uh, tooling. Uh-huh. I can do more of it. But, well, right. We could sit here all day and watch yeah, you do it. Yeah, but I uh, tried to show that. Right. Uh, staining okay. or... Bring it on the sewing machine for a minute. Sewing machine, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Everything in here is a sharp pointed or sharp razor sharp. Uh huh. I spent a lot of time sharpening the knives and stuff, but uh, look at that sewing machine. Yeah, this one. It's 25 inch throat, like making those rifle cases, uh -huh. 24 inches wide. Wow. And you can see some plywood over against the table. I've got uh -huh. piece of plywood with folding legs, and I'll set it on here and unfold the legs so I've got a large table. Uh huh. Keeps that leather from sliding right. down. And let me get something over okay. here. This is called a stitch mover. And. It leaves a groove like that, uh -huh. and that's what I sew in. That'll make the uh, make it easier yeah, it to follow the, a line. It keeps the stitches buried down in there. Yeah, so gotcha. They don't, the thread doesn't wear out so quick. Yeah, if they're if how they're how above. That is. Yeah, that's, that's and this covers all different needle thing. sizes and everything else. Grab the ends of my thread here. Oh, you run down. <laughs> you go backwards or forward. See how very cool. Very cool. 
Wow. And so that's how you make real thick stuff. I can sew it as thin as, oh, about two or three pieces of paper. Wow. That's a heck of a needle on there. Yeah. You don't want to get your finger in there. No. There's one, one of the needles. This is not the biggest, but it's pretty close. It's pretty big. You got all sizes of needles in here, but these, uh, it's very rare one of these will break or bend. Uh, the only time it does say you've got a rivet or something and you get too close oh. to it and it hits the metal. Yeah, like it. But imagine that, so. It's, uh, They're not designed to sew metal together, are they? No. <laughs> <laughs> but they will sew a finger out. I bet it. they will. But it's... Uh, that one over there, so it's finished, uh, finer. And uh, I use this on things like wallets and chaps and things that I want finer. It's, it'll sew with, as you can see, a smaller needle and a smaller, th smaller thread. Uh huh. But uh, and do smaller stitches. And, and you don't even cut a groove on this. Uh -huh. Well, you, you can usually. But gotcha. Yeah, because set it down in the leather some, that yeah. way uh, it doesn't get rubbed. Yeah, fine. That's it. Is. Yeah. Wow. I got a seam coming out of my jeans. Will you uh, sew them real quick? I'm kidding. Uh, I knew that, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, you take real fine, like the shirt. Uh huh. These needles are so heavy and the holes down here are so big, you'll just poke the material down there. I believe it. Won't sew on fabric. Not <laughs> but I use real thick, about eighth inch thick uh, uh, cotton canvas. Uh huh. I make cowboy bed rolls, tents, stuff like that. Yeah. From time to time. And so quite a bit of nylon from time to time. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, different things. I make. Uh, one of the, I used to, I made two things that are very unique years ago. For the longest time, you remember when bungee jumping started? Mm hmm I had a company in Japan that bought a lot of bungee jumping cord for making cuts. Interesting. And we had five different kinds of colors of leather. Yeah. And we used the real supple leather. Mm hmm And kind of like the uh, cover on the steering wheel on the car. Yeah. You fold it over and you lace it together. Uh huh. And they just hang all the bungee cords on the wall and they could tell, okay, red, that's for 200 pounds. Yeah. Or gray would be for yeah. 250 or whatever. So they could just grab them real quick. Uh huh. And somebody 300 pounds would use a lot heavier cord than somebody 150. Imagine. So they yeah. did that. And they sold tons of those. Huh. And then the other was probably. A, up until just a short time ago, most of the college and high school drill teams that wear the white gauntlets, uh -huh. cuffs, yeah. belts, and all that, big wide mm -hmm. belts, I made most of those. Oh, wow. I had a lot of white leather. I, I cut out the kind of belt, the shape they wanted to Interesting. make them, put grommets in them, yeah. tie them together. So right. To the so I made a lot of those things, but uh, those bungee jumping cords, <laughs> I learned something about that. In fact, I'll show you that for a quick too. Okay. This thing, the shape of the cord, the cover, was like this. Apparently, the last one I used was red. But you take this down, this is like a giant cookie cutter. Yeah. But I'd have to cut this out by hand. A piece of leather would be that and shape. Punch each one of these holes individually with my mallet over there and I've made so many of them it's driving me crazy. Yeah. Once I got the holes punched, you slip with your knife from there to there and then you just roll it around and these two pieces fold it over this uh -huh. and you sew this together. Huh. Well, when uh, I finally was getting enough business and, and I discovered these, this is called a die. Uh huh. And I went and bought one of these, or had it made, so it didn't take so doggone long, and that made my cost much less. This is called a, cook, a clicker. 
<laughs> it's right here. I just noticed. Nice. I make a lot of these and carve the sacred heart on them right here. Uh-huh. Put an air holes here and a punch a hole there. The state school in Gainesville can't have anything on them, but the kids can have anything on them. Right. So I make a lot of these uh, here in town, and they take them over and give them to the kids at school. They just buy this stuff. Yeah. But the way this works, put these two Wait, I mean, yeah, let me... And now what's that for? This is a flap that I can carve a brand or your name or on and it fits the flap of the shotgun. Oh, uh, okay. But I can also use it for other things. But something you make exactly the same a lot. Right, you want to die for that. <laughs> But some, you know, like making the saddle, there's all different shapes and sizes. Yeah. And everything else you can. Right. You could, I have a bunch of them that I use, like to cut out the long part, but it just cuts it oversized. Then I have to trim it by hand. Gotcha. It saves a lot of time rolling out that big old hide and cutting Right. It. But uh, this piece here, well, Oh, those are all dies along that yeah, side. All of these are dies. That machine will cut that thing out. Got my slot in it for the breast collar bead. Uh huh. And, you know, once you get a saddle that you're going to make a lot of the same, yeah. Not very often. The, those are all dies this, this for saddle. Back rigging that holds the back uh -huh. D on to hold it down. This front rigging, this is called the ground seat. This and this. And two or three others. Those are horn covers. Uh, that's the cover that goes across here. Of course, you got to mold it and trim it and everything. Oh else. yeah, that that, uh, that looks like one of the hardest pieces there. That right there goes like that. And, uh, hmm. This cut the strap across the oh, back. The yeah. Dirt. Yeah. So we got the holes punched. We're folding it and tying it. Uh -huh. So. Pretty cool. As you can imagine, these are expensive enough. You, you don't want to uh, buy one unless it's going to be something you use over and over. Yeah, and you don't want to use that as a crowbar either. That briefcase I showed you over, <laughs> I finally had dies made for it. Oh, wow. It's got the punches and everything already. For the in. buckle. So, uh, these are for the hole, the holes for the handle. The handle, yeah. And uh, I've got all the, the pieces for that made. And uh, I'll check the covers. That's a carbine scabbard for a saddle. And uh, just different pistol holsters. Yeah. Once I know what will fit a particular holster, like this one will fit a 1911 uh, oh, Army yeah. Colt. And this punches or cuts out the holster and this folds over and sews down for the belt loop. Uh -huh. So you have several of them, maybe. But uh, then you. A lot of these, like this, I don't have a pattern for, I mean, a cutout for that, a die, or this one, so I have to hand cut them and uh, mold them by hand. Lots of different colors of, uh, of yeah, you can string, see of all of kinds of different, different colors of, of leather. and Different hides that I use for shaps. This is what those rifle cases are made out of. This bull hide. Oh, okay. Real thick, heavy duty stuff. Mm -hmm. It's very supple. Yeah. And uh, you got all colors and thicknesses and styles. Then you've got like, that leather you was asking yeah. a while ago. This is an ostrich print. It comes in different colors. So just take a, a thin leather and they and they make it look uh -huh. like there's a ostrich. lizard print. Uh, made purses and stuff out of that. And 
your padded seats that you sit in the saddle, I use this thick uh, rough out stuff on it, the suede. Yeah. Heavy duty stuff, so it last a long time. Yeah. So, and then real thin, supple things like this, I use for liner letters, like a notebooks and wallets and things like gotcha. that. Gotcha. So, all kind of, here's the belt that I use in the rifle cases. Oh, wow, that's soft. That's <laughs> nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I got it in gun, uh, kind of a bluish gray color, too. Yeah, just different liners that you can use in yeah. rifle cases or whatever. But, uh, Very cool. There's different thicknesses and types of leathers in here. Most of what I use for things that do carbon is all down here. Oh, okay. Different thicknesses. But, oh, I'll show you one other thing right here. This is my splitter. I was going to ask you what this machine was. Uh, let's see what that's set on right now. Eight ounce. Let's go down. Let's just set it somewhere down here. Or something. Splitter. All right, you can see how thick that is right like, now. Yeah. Is it going to like cut it? Yeah. Make it thinner pieces? Yeah, or it'll go in there. Interesting. Got a mash on the pedal. Bend it down a little, let's go down a little thinner. Oh, so it, it's kind of like a planer with yeah, wood, a wood exactly, planer. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. Let me cut this. Okay, you get a smaller piece. Well, cut it straight. Oh, okay. It's what the drag. Yeah. Yeah. There we go, we got that thickness. All right, let me get that again. Okay, that thickness. Run it through the splitter. Hung up again, didn't it? Hmm. What's the deal here? Oh, it's not there in the middle. It looks. Hmm. That's unusual. What? So I see where it split on right line. here. It's uh, like come apart. Oh, it looks like it folded over. Yeah. There you go. Reverse it. Bring it back out. Sure enough. Oh, look at there. It, look, it, it cut it. Two thin strips yeah. instead of wow. Now that keeps me from having to buy too much leather of one size. If I'm needing, I'm say I'm out of this thickness, uh -huh. but I got a bunch of this thickness. Uh -huh. I just bring it over and split it. Yeah, and then you have so, two pieces that thin. Yeah. Now would you you'll use this for something, I or just, you could though. Just, you could, but I just throw it away. Yeah. Interesting. And this kind of leather is not real strong. Uh, this thin, rough split like right. this. Now this is the way the uh, tanneries get all the different thicknesses. They split. They got tables, cutters like this as wide as eight foot. Wow. They just run a whole hide through there. Wow. And they get it down to the thickness they want. But uh, got riveters and all kinds of stuff. All these tools. <laughs> Took years to get to those. Yeah. Most Took of these have years run, for you to need them all, too. They'll run anywhere from 65 to $150 a piece. I was going to ask so you. So you can see, you wouldn't just go out and buy all of them at one mm, time. No. And these are hole punches, which, let me grab this down here. Oh, yeah. I use this to keep from damaging my punch. Right. Or, or my bench. Right. There you go. Oh. Got all different sizes of punch. Hmm. So, oh. This, oh, well, I showed you that rifle sling I just made, didn't I? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Miguel was written on it. Yeah. 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 So you gotta punch your holes and everything. Of course, they make machines that'll run through and punch holes if you punch them the same distance all the time and all kinds of stuff. But a custom dealer like me doesn't use stuff like that. 
That has a razor blade in it, doesn't it? Yeah. That's called a scabber. If you want to get a, whoops, a feather edge on something to join two pieces of leather together. Oh, I see. So you want to bevel the edge? Bevel in the edge. And yeah. the thinner you get that, and say you fold two pieces together and glue it down, then you've got a very thin edge. So it's got those, and these are just... You can enlarge a hole pot size. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, where'd you put that hole you just oh, made? Oh, there it is. <laughs> so you can go run it through there and just keep going. It'll get a little bigger. Mm-hmm. And you can put them in there and pry with them and do all kinds of things with those. And these are, that's a buttonhole punch. <laughs> just so I can make a buttonhole. Uh, different. These are metal slickers, kind of smooth the leather down. It's just a bevel piece of glass. Oh, yeah. And you can also rub the edge over. I'll show you a gotcha. quick on edging, too. You got that, see how uh, rough and uh -huh. yeah. sharp that edge is? Everything I do, I, make, I have to use these. It rounds the edge. And you got different sizes to get smaller and larger radiuses. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of wet it. Take a good old deer antler. <laughs> I was going to ask you what that antler was for. And that just makes it. Yeah, rounded it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little wet right now, but as it dries, it'll get smoother and smoother yeah. when you rub it. And it just gets shiny and smooth as it can be. Yeah. <laughs> what we call hand rubbed edges. But you got a variety of tools. Every one of these run probably 65 to $85 a piece. Wow. So. Oh, and then as you keep growing, you get your uh business going and uh, you get better uh better looking work because you got better tools right and you and then and you add more tools it's just like this stamp right here yeah you had to buy that yeah, how I, much did I that had, cost to I, I had it made yeah how much did that cost to make <laughs> i don't even remember what this one cost it's two or three hundred uh, yeah i was thinking And there it is. Now I tell you, the guy that made this tool was one darn good machinist. When you can put my whole name and Munster, Texas, and Maker all in that little bitty space. Yeah, and less than a square inch. Better. Somebody really was good at machining. Mm -hmm. I guess I got, got a bigger one too. Oh, okay, yeah. Bigger parts. Yeah, that's a lot bigger. Yeah, just all kinds of different tools. Yeah, pretty cool. I was about to look, I was looking spot to your cross. Yeah, there. that was that die I cut that cross out of. Rather than putting it on the machine, I used a mallet. To yeah, cut what's this in. wooden thing here in the corner for? Oh. <laughs> uh, I use that to mold, like right here. If I'm gonna put piece of leather there you can see this is called the ground seat once you cover it you push hard on it like that to mold it oh okay and uh it gets it to it gets to that, bend and it makes that, that shape and yeah just like right here this is, here's an old one. just go like that gotcha. you get that leather down and you put glue on there and once you get it glued down you do that and it sticks good and fits right yeah and it won't pull away because it's that shape yeah so that's just kind of a homemade. You order. made that? No, I oh. didn't, but a friend of mine did. Oh, okay. Yeah. I could hear out there. A lot of these things, you know, railroad iron and my grandpa's anvil. And yeah. You use a lot of different things. Wonderful. Thank you so much for showing. Yeah.
showing us. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope. Uh, I hope enough of them get to watch it. Uh, they don't always. Um, a lot of people need assistance to to use the computer to you to yeah, to watch these. You look at uh, <laughs> My wife runs the computer. I don't even yeah. turn it on. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we really appreciate you taking your time to, to show us. And, yeah. and uh, you know, if there's uh, more interesting things you'd like to share sometime, just let me know and okay. come back. Anything I can do to help, we'll Yeah, let me know. all right. All right, well, um, I guess I'm going to close out the video. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye.